Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over the Walking Dead X Dead by Daylight chapter concept that I have created. And today we will go through five different pieces of this chapter. New Killer being the Horde, New Survivor being Rick Grimes, New Survivor being Daryl Dixon, uh, one of the two possible maps being the Quarry, and the other possible map being the CDC Laboratory. If you all enjoy the content, make sure to that like, subscribe, ring that bell, share to others. And without further ado, let's get into it. So, for the killer, the horde, we have its power being power of the mob. It comes with four parts to it. First part being special enemies, which are walkers. It says zombies, I forgot to change it to walkers. The horde spawns with three additional walkers. These walkers run faster than Nemesis' zombies and are still able to hit and infect survivors. When a survivor is hit by a walker, they get infected and lose a health state. They act, it acts the same as Nemesis' zombies when uh, being blinded or stunned by a pallet. The second part to this, uh, the power is special interaction being the infection. When a survivor gets inf infected by, via any means, they will slowly progress a progression bar. Uh, while it's building up, they will be slightly louder, and that there's no really negative effects while being infected. It's once you're maxed uh, infection, uh, they cannot be cured for 90 seconds after they've been fully infected. They will have their sh heartbeat shown to the killer for 5 seconds, and will be hindered by 5%. I'm not sure, 5% might be a little much, uh, so we could probably do 2 or 3% there, and will be significantly louder then just being infected if a survivor gets down while having maximum infection they will have the ability to be buried and they can find cdc crates with a cure found around the map uh third part to the power is horde control uh you have the ability to control any of the walkers on the map and they will have you will have 20 seconds to control them before you're forced back into your own body while controlling a walker you'll move at 4.6 meters a second and can attack any survivor that you come across. Uh, when attacking a survivor via this method, it will infect them. Uh, and the last part of its ability is Sprint. While controlling your main body, you will be able to charge up an active ability button for a sprint. While sprinting, you can attack, but if you miss, you will have a lengthy cooldown. While sprinting, you run at 5 meters a second. So, just a little bit of clarification here. The Horde would be like a 1 in 4 killer, kind of like the Knight. You would be one zombie, like a main zombie, which would have the skins change. And then you'd have three zombies, kind of like Nemesis zombies, which would act as I had said here. So technically, you're not playing as four characters, but it gives you that stuff on the map. FYI, just um, some of these things might be overpowered. I have tried my best to balance these uh, through different ways but i am just please let me know in the comments what you would do to change them to try and make them more balanced and now for the horde's three unique perks now first up is jump scare when a survivor loses a health state within 10 20 or 30 seconds of a chase the survivor becomes traumatized for 90 seconds traumatized survivors suffer from a five percent hindrance and gain a 6, 8, and 10% act or penalty to action speeds. So these would be like vaulting, uh, locker, going into lockers, repairing generators, totems, healings, all, or healing, and all that. Again, I'm not sure if 5% hindrance would be too much, especially for 90 seconds. Probably I would change that to probably about 2% hindrance. Bloodthirsty is a second perk. I gain a 25, 30, or 35% uh, blood points, a uh, blood point increase in all categories for every survivor's sacrifice at the end of a trial. Simply, it's kind of a uh, more balanced barbecue, so if you still want a blood point grind, you can do this, but you just actually have to sacrifice survivors to get it. So, I think it would work out. No escape. So, this is one of two perks in this concept that will take up two perk slots. Uh, I figured that was a reasonable way to counter the overpoweredness of it, but even if it is too overpowered, please let me know in the comments what you would do to change it. So, for no escape, you spawn with two hex totems and is deactivated when both uh, are cleansed. 
or boond, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, whenever a generator is in a trial, gain a token. All status, and uh, once it's destroyed, all status effects will linger for 30, 60, and 90 seconds after the corresponding hex totems have been destroyed. At one token, all survivors have hemorrhage and mangled. At two tokens, all survivors have a 1%. 1.5% or 2% hindrance. Three tokens, all survivors become oblivious. Four tokens, all survivors become exposed. And five tokens, all survivors become exhausted. And like and it says at the bottom, if this perk's too OP, you could make it take up two perk slots, which is what I have done for this concept. Now for Rick Grimes, who will be one of the first of the two survivors coming in this chapter. He would have low to medium injured noises. He'd be a mid to large sized character. He'd have possible sins being old Rick, old Rick with a different shirt, young Rick, uh, old, old Rick from the later, later seasons, um, mid season Rick, uh, injured Rick, uh, blue shirt Rick, cowboy Rick with his coat, cowboy Rick without his coat, and then season five Rick. FYI, I have not, act, I've watched up to season two of The Walking Dead so far, so please don't spoil it for me in the comments, as well as if I do get some of these wrong things wrong, please forgive me as I haven't gotten all the way through the show yet. His three unique perks would be not over yet. When you are the last survivor standing, you gain a four, five, or six percent haste and you gain the ability to see the auras of the exit gates. These effects last for 60, 90, and 120 seconds. Whenever a uh, second perk is hurry up, whenever repairing a generator, you press the ability button to activate this perk. While this perk is activated, you increase your repair speed by 60, 80, or 100% for 5, 6, and 7 seconds. Uh, this perk cannot be used by multiple survivors at the same time. Uh, and this is an exhaustion perk, so it, ca it causes the exhaustion status effect for 90 seconds. And now for the second perk that would I believe would take up two slots is time to end this. So it would, it's a revolver. I'm just saying that now, but I think I've balanced it out pretty well. So once you have been hooked for the second time and you are on your death hook, this perk activates. Press the active ability button to pull out a revolver and aim it. Click to fire, er, and, and then click to fire. When the killer is hit uh, with this, they are stunned for 2, 3, or 4 seconds. Uh, shooting the gun, not at the killer, could destroy pallets if you shoot it at a pallet. Breakable walls if you shoot it at a wall. Uh, damage generators if you shoot it at a generator. Uh, destroy totems if you shoot it at a totem. Uh, and it can't injure other survivors. Got to make that very clear. If a perk requires a stun to activate this, it like activate this uh, perk will count. Um, this perk can only be uh, activated once per trial, obviously. And if the killer is affected by this perk, uh, they cannot be affected with it again for ninety seconds. So, say you shot him, and then a friend or, or another survivor came and tried to shoot him both of them wouldn't count. The first one would count, the second one wouldn't hit him, or wouldn't affect a stun, but would still use up the perk, if that makes sense. Uh, if needed to be nerfed, uh, like I said before, could take up two perk slots. Now for our second of two survivors is Daryl Dixon. Possible skins being Season 1 Daryl, Season 2 Daryl, Cloak Daryl, Shirt Daryl, um, whatever you want to call that Daryl whatever you want to call that, Daryl, uh, plaid shirt Daryl, and zombie hunter Daryl. Uh, he would come with three new perks, his first one being Vigorous Act. After taking five, four, or three protection hits, this perk activates. The next time you're being carried by the killer, you can press the active ability button to stab an arrow into their back, stunning them. Um, if this is too underpowered, which I'm not 100% sure if it is, you could reduce it to being from 4 slash 3 slash 2, but that would be behavior's choice if they would ever bring it in. His second perk is Resourcefulness. After opening a chest, you have the ability to scavenge in the chest one time. 
Once you use, once the chest is used, it closes, and after 60, 50, or 40 seconds, the chest will open again with a new item. This chest uh, cannot be scavenged afterwards. This perk works only once per chest. So allow me to explain. You find a chest, you open it, you get an item. Simple. With this perk, you have the ability to scavenge through it again. Okay? So you get a sec- Oh, wrong button. Uh, let's just go back here. You, so you search your chest, you get an item. Simple as that. After getting the item, you have the ability to scavenge the chest again. Get a second item. And then once that's done, the chest will automatically close. And after the duration being 60, 50, or 40 seconds, it will open again with a new item and you won't have to search for it. You can just grab it. And they'll, that will only work on, like, works once per chest chest that makes sense now his third perk is survivalist after safely rescuing four three or two survivors this perk activates the next time you are in a chase you gain a one two or three percent haste status effect and complete actions 30 40 50 percent faster uh, this effect lingers for 10 seconds after you escape a chase and then deactivates uh, the action speeds that would be increased would be vaulting, going to a locker, repairing, totem. So, I mean, if you can somehow get a chase and write on a totem, you could use that extra speed to do it. Uh, possible legendary survivor, like skins, not actual survivors. First one is Carol Pelletier. Uh, it would be a legendary skin for Daryl Dixon. Michonne Grimes, who would be a legendary skin for Rick Grimes. Uh, Glenn Ree, which would also be a legendary skin for Rick Grimes. Maggie Green, which would be a legendary skin for uh, Daryl Dixon. Dale Horvath, uh, which would also be a legendary skin for Daryl Dixon. Morgan Jones, who would be a legendary skin for Rick Grimes. Abraham Ford, who would be a legendary skin for Daryl Dixon. Herschel Green, which would be a legendary skin for Rick Grimes. And these last two being Merle. Uh, Dixon, and which would be a legendary skin for Daryl Dixon, and Shane Walsh, which would be a legendary skin for Rick Grimes. I'm not sure how well those would work, so I mean, spoiler alert, skip about 10 seconds in the video. They are both villains in the in second and a later, later season, so not sure how well that would work. Uh, obviously, any of these could take the survivor spot. I feel Daryl and Rick are the most fitting. Um, and yeah, all these could be legendary skins, uh, and they would all have their own voice lines, so, and they have talk, like, in the lobby and all that. So, just an idea. And, we have three legendary killer skins, like, kind of like the Hunk and, um, the Blight skin that's also Resident Evil. So, three, the first one would be Negan Smith, who would... Be very fittingly, be a legendary skin for the trickster. His knives, I think, would be replaced with combat knives, and he would have a unique Mori and voice lines. Second of the three, now I apologize if this doesn't fit, as I have not watched the season yet, but I think it would be a decent fit. Uh, the governor as a skin for the death slinger, he would also have a unique Mori and voice lines. And last but not least is Beta, who would be a legendary skin for the Trapper. Uh, he would have, again, a unique Mori and voice lines. For the maps, I see two possible maps being the Quarry, which would be a new map, or the CDC Laboratory map, which either one I think could work for an incredible Walking Dead chapter. And that is it. I hope you all enjoyed the concept. Please let me know in the description what you think and your ideas on it. As well as please tell me if you think anything's overpowered. Please let me know like what I could do to nerf it. Um, yeah, so I hope if you all enjoyed. If you did, uh, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, ring that bell, share around. And I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.